criticism number 13. People are saying, oh, Malaysians' debt is so high, 87% of GDP. So this country is gone cash. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you the good news. Malaysian household assets is huge. Our household asset is 322% of the GDP. The problem with the US, when they had the subprime crisis a few years ago, what was the problem? They went into very high household debt, and it was not backed by the asset of the houses. Because the debt was triple times, many, many times more than the value of the asset. And that is, of course, a problem. In our case, that is not the problem. Criticism number 14. You okay? Okay. We have to be very careful in this country because otherwise we go bankrupt. There are many people out there that are talking about this country will go bankrupt because one time I used that word. Let me clarify. I said this. If Malaysia does not do an economic transformation program, and if our economy grows at less than 3%, and if our national debt rises by 12.5% per year, per year, then we will become bankrupt in the year 2019. I still say that. But what did we do? We implemented the economic transformation program. We cut our fiscal deficit. We've been growing our gross national income at a rate of 8.27% on a CAGA per annum. We're not going bankrupt, ladies and gentlemen. And you can see this data shows we've been cutting our fiscal deficit. Many governments promise that they will cut their fiscal deficit, but they don't do it. This is a very important BCG chart. And BCG are of the view, the vertical axis. This is government debt as percentage of GDP, the vertical axis. The horizontal axis is the fiscal position of the country. Is it in surplus or is it in deficit? According to them, if a country, their punya loan, the borrowing, is greater than 100% of the GDP, and that same country has a fiscal deficit worse off than 8%, then they belong to the bankrupt category. They call it politely sovereign crisis level, the red zone. But if you are a country that has a borrowing that is low, lower than 70% of our debt, and you are at fiscal deficit of better than 4%, then you belong in what is called safe zone. When we started, Malaysia in 2009 was the orange dot on the left hand, your left hand side. Then 2010, we moved to the right. 2011, further to the right. 2012, further to the right. 2013, we're inside the safe zone. And 2014, we're well inside the safe zone. So economically, fiscally, our country is very well managed because we have been looking at this picture and we've been designing our model so that we move in there. By the way, Singapore's debt level is already at 100% GDP. So ours is still at 53.3%, well below the threshold that people put out there. So there is no cause for alarm because Malaysia is in the safe zone. Under the 11 Malaysia plan, which my friend Dato Sri Wahid and the EPU have led us through and the presented PM had recently announced this, we will be able to reduce our government debt further from 53% to 43% by the year 2020. We don't increase, we'll bring it down as a percentage of the, the GDP. Our fiscal deficit will become neutral in the year 2020, no more deficit by the year 2020. We will be able to grow our economy so that we achieve high income status. So we are clear about our 11 Malaysia play, where we're going. Criticism number 15. Oh, we are over-reliant on oil and gas. 
So when oil price come down, then Malaysia memang teruk lah. Ladies and gentlemen, every single year from 2009, we have been reducing our reliance on oil and gas. When we started, Malaysia's government revenue, more than 40% came out from oil and gas. In fact, it's now reduced to 29.7 last year. So we're not as reliant on oil and gas as we used to because of the 12 national key economic areas. All of them have been growing, including communications huh? and infrastructure, one of the NKEAs. All of them have been growing. And that has been able to help cushion the contribution that we have to rely on oil and gas. Next slide, please. GST is a symbol because it's fueling inflation. So we don't like what you guys are doing in government. That's a criticism. I must say, ladies and gentlemen, in the whole world, 169 countries have implemented GST. The experience of all the countries have implemented GST is that for the first one or two years, there is an increase in inflation for a while, but after the second year or the third year, it will come back to normal. Our view is that Temporarily, perhaps for the year 2015 and 16, inflation will rise up to 4% because of the implementation of GST. 2017, it will come back to 2.6%, and then eventually to our normality within two years.